GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Govi, a vernacular edutech brand, skilling everyone everywhere. And I bet that a lot of those people who had the judgy comments were mostly men. Because I don't think women, and especially mothers, would say those things because they know how hard it is to, number one, go through pregnancy, have your body change like that, not be in control of how you look, which, you know, was a little bit daunting. The love was not a problem. I think what comes with love is trust, respect, uh, communication, and these are all components of being loved and, and experiencing love. And some people are just unable to do those things. Yeah. You know, they're unable to be trustworthy. They're unable to give respect. We met on an Aston Martin race day and it was uh, myself and then like 10, 12, or the guys actually, I was the only female of the group and we were invited down to Silverstone race course in the UK to race these Aston Martins. Anyway, we were having banter throughout the day. He won me over with the dog talk. <laughs> he, he, we started, he started with his French bulldog, show me pictures. Then I was showing my pictures of her, but the phones were out. Oh, let me take your number. We should go for a coffee. <laughs> and then here we are. The way he was with his mom was just, oh, beautiful. Like their relationship, uh, his respect for his mother. And I think it's a telltale sign how how a man is with their mums. To him, I see videos of uh, your son with oh him. Oh my god! Pancakes. They're all obsessed with him more so than me. I'm like my <laughs> mom, she always wanted a son, and I feel like she thinks Ed's like her. Well, she is like a future son-in-law. Uh, so they get on like a house on fire. The most beautiful relationship of all is that of. Dre and Ed, and I think that's the reason why I want this relationship to flourish and go the distance. So you took um, a little break uh, from mm -hmm. movies today, you're back. Mm -hmm. um, you actually uh, had had a child mm -hmm. and I remember this post of yours, uh, correct me if I'm wrong again, mm -hmm. when you were losing your weight, mm -hmm. there was so much chatter about you uh -huh. and it's uh, people usually consider body shaming only to be fat shaming uh -huh. but body shaming is so much more than that uh -huh. you went through so much of that when uh -huh. you were having that transition and mm -hmm. transformation did that get to you because you're you're already trying mm -hmm. to do something mm -hmm. and then people are actually judging you i think you know as a woman as a new mom uh it's it's a difficult journey and only other mothers will realize that and I bet that a lot of those people who had the judgy comments were mostly men because I don't think women and especially mothers would say those things because they know how hard it is to number one go through pregnancy have your body change like that not be in control of how you look which you know was a little bit daunting because obviously we live in a world and an industry where appearance yeah. is so prominent so to have that changed without your will or your you know control it's difficult uh but obviously having a child speaks volumes That's and that true. you know that drowns out all the opinions or any of the judgy comments uh so i was very fortunate to be able to lose the weight because you know i know a lot of women really struggle but i love fitness i love fitness not only for you know, physical appearance, but it's really good for me for my mental health. I think everybody who works out um, will find themselves a lot happier mentally as well as physically. Yeah. So I use that as a form of therapy almost, my fitness yeah. and runs and training outdoors. And uh, that also helped me drop the pounds, <laughs> which was great. You know, I'll <laughs> tell you something. You said something wonderful that um, sexism is uh, so much related to shaming because... Mm -hmm. um, um, most women go through this mm -hmm. and it's it's shameful and I used to feel that maybe our country um, it happens a little more because we get to see it right in front of our face but it happens mm -hmm. globally as well like many actors and actresses especially have come out and spoken about the um, that how they have been bullied because mm -hmm. um, of their gender mm -hmm. and because of the choices they make mm -hmm. um, in society at large globally people can't handle women with strong choices and mm -hmm. people who know what choices they're making mm -hmm. you chose to become a mother at a mm -hmm. certain age when you wanted to be at a certain mm -hmm. stage of your career when you were already doing so well mm -hmm. uh, but that also came with a lot of judgment from people mm -hmm. 
and uh, people overlook the fact that when somebody is pregnant they can have their own complications and even post pregnancy there's postpartum that mm-hmm. people deal with did that hurt you at that point because you're already dealing with so many hormonal changes it mm-hmm. can get to you did that happen mm-hmm. to you I mean, I was so engulfed in motherhood as I couldn't get <laughs> less what you think. I was like, I was sleepless nights, you know, I was breastfeeding, my hormones were a riot. So, you know, I, truthfully, it was like water off a duck's back. Uh, if I had time to think about it, I would probably get extremely defensive because, you know, it's a, it's such an incredible, it's an incredible trait to be able to bring life into the world. Yeah. And then to have somebody criticize you or have their opinion on how you should run your life when, you know, they haven't walked a day in your shoes, you know, and that's, that's one of the, the reasons I always try to live by this motto of, you know, treat everybody with kindness. You don't know what anybody is going through. That's you have true. no idea, you know, behind closed doors, what is happening. So how can you have, you know, an opinion or a judgment on on somebody else's life. It's impossible. You know, it speaks very highly about you and yourself and your insecurities and, you know, your own problems than, than, you know, what this stranger is doing. Like, what's it to you? You know? But, but, (laughs) um, you know, unfortunately, I keep having this conversation with my mother because I've also been brought up a certain way. Mm -hmm. And um, regardless of how much I try Mm -hmm. sometimes I just can't be nasty to people who are nasty to me and it does get to me no and that's the best way to be kill them with kindness but trust me they don't kill them with with kindness kindness. (laughs) kill them with kindness and you know it takes you know it takes the kindness to them to have them look at themselves and they'll be like oh maybe I'm the problem yeah maybe it's me but there are days when you're already dealing with something because mm-hmm. of something happening in your life, personally, professionally. And then those thoughts come up that, you know, there's always that one person who overloves in any relationship yes. and relationship of every kind. And they tend to get hurt mm-hmm. eventually. Mm-hmm. You feel that in your relationships also, you have been that person. And when you when you look back, um, does it ever, did it ever make you like a little, like question love in any way? I think, I, I, I didn't question the love. I think, I think in their own ways, they loved in the capacity they were able to love. And I think the love was not a problem. I think what comes with love is trust, respect, uh, communication. And these are all components of being loved and and experiencing love. And some people are just unable to do those things. You know, they're unable to be trustworthy. They're unable to give respect where respect's given. They're unable to communicate. They they can't, you know, express themselves, which is difficult for, for them and difficult for a relationship. Uh, but as time goes on and you evolve as a person and you know yourself and you know what you need and what you want and what you require, you know, you, you, you have your standards set high. That's true. Mm-hmm. And eventually love finds its way. I oh, feel. yeah. Um, but <laughs> very deep in here, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I hope I'm manifesting it. Um, but when when you speak about that, when uh-huh. you speak about sexism, uh-huh. um, there are so many women who have come out and spoken how they were, um, and because you're public figures, you're always made out to be the problem in a relationship when a relationship mm-hmm. doesn't work out, mm-hmm. and it has happened to you. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with that then? How is there a defense to that? Because you're a public figure, your life is out. Then mm-hmm. suddenly people are like. People who are celebrating it, uh-huh. and next moment they're judging you, questioning you uh-huh. and your integrity. I know, I, I you gotta laugh because I think the people who are saying that, are you talking about past ex past? Yeah. yeah, I think the people who are saying that, I mean, I know the truth. They know the truth. And they feel that, again, it comes back to people having an opinion or a judgment or a criticism. It speaks a lot about themselves than it does about you. You gotta let people do what they need to do. They always expose themselves. But at a time like that, you uh-huh. found love again. And yeah. I, I read that you had me at coffee and dogs. Yes. Was that the first meeting? It was. It was. And we were talking. Actually, it wasn't the first meeting. We met on an Aston Martin race day. And it was uh, myself and then like 10, 12. Or the guys, actually. I was the only 
female of the group and we were invited down to Silverstone Racecourse in the UK to race these Aston Martins. Anyway, we were having banter throughout the day and we were racing and um, I was just about to move uh, to a different place in London as well. And uh, that's when Ed and I got talking and he won me over with the dog talk. <laughs> he, he, we started, he started with this French bulldog, showing me pictures. Then I was showing my pictures of her, but the phones were out. Oh, let me take your number. We should go for a coffee. Da, 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 da. And then here we are. But when was the moment you realized that this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with? Um, that's a really good, I, it was on Easter Sunday and we went to the local pub for our lunch and he brought his mum. And the way he was with his mom was just, oh, beautiful. Like their relationship, uh, his respect for his mother. And I think it's a telltale sign how, how a man is with their moms and how, you know, they put them on a pedestal and how they love them and, and how they respect them. And I think that's a telltale sign in, in a good man. A great relationship is always built on dignity and balance and respect like you said yes um how did the family warm up to him i see videos of uh, your son with oh him. oh my god pancakes uh, they're all obsessed with him more so than me like my mom <laughs> she always wanted a son and i feel like she thinks ed's like her well, she's like a future son-in-law uh, so they get on like a house on fire uh, she's popping around when I'm away over here. She pops around for tea. She'll help him do his wardrobes with him. And uh, they have a great relationship. But the most beautiful relationship of all is that of Dre and Ed. And I think that's the reason why I want this relationship to flourish and go the distance because of how incredible they are together and how much my little boy, you know, admires him and... Um, as a great connect with him. And he's fantastic considering he doesn't have kids. And kids can be hard work, let That's me tell true. you. Let me tell you. And, and in today's is, terms, definitely. He is amazing. He's so patient. He's very kind, very caring, but very decisive as well. You know, he's a good male role model, which is beautiful. But d does your child understand the, the equation that both of you share? Have you spoken so to him? So he doesn't know life before Ed. He met That's Ed. That's so lovely. Yeah, because obviously the first few years in life they have no memory of. Uh, and I always remember them first meeting and he met with Ed's mom as well. And she was the most incredible woman. She was actually a child psychologist. So she just knew. We were really worried and I was like, you know, I need this to go well. And, you know, I want this to be really comfortable for him. And it was like, the, one of the best days and she did it so beautifully and, and carefully and considerately so you know I think Ed's taken a real leaf out of his mum's book when it comes to you know Andreas. Hi I'm Amy Jackson and you're watching Galata India. GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Gooby, a vernacular edutech brand, skilling everyone everywhere.